Hi everyone, I'm Katie. I'm an educator at the Montshire Museum of Science. And while we are all self-isolating, self-quarantining at home and social distancing, we wanted to bring a little bit of the Montshire magic to your house. And so I'm here to talk about bubbles today. And so here is my random leftover from Halloween bubbles that I have in my house. You might have some too. And so as we're blowing these bubbles, what I want you to notice is that bubbles come in lots of different sizes, but not that many shapes. So it turns out that bubbles come in spheres or balls, and it's because of a specific reason. So uh, for a given volume, a, a sphere or a ball actually has the lowest surface area. So it's the most efficient shape that you can make. Um, another thing to notice about bubbles is the beautiful colors. Can you see this? Those rainbow of colors that come out in bubbles. And so again, that happens not because of magic, but because of cold, hard math. So as bubbles are thick and thin in certain areas, there are wavelengths of light that we can see being um, refracted, reflected in the bubbles. And we'll put a link to that to explain all the physics behind it. But it's really, really interesting. Another thing is that bubbles are filled with something. So these bubbles that I'm blowing right now are filled with air. And truth be told, bubbles the bubbles exhibit has always reminded me of cells. And so just like these bubbles here, our cells are made up of a soapy, fatty, lipid layer that's surrounding something. So that something is cytoplasm and ribosomes and the nucleus that contains our DNA. And so bubbles are a lipid soap detergent that is surrounding something, a matter, in this case, air. So for the next week, we've got a lot of experiments coming up, but just in case you don't have an old bottle of bubble solution kicking around your house, I want to show you how to make the Montshire solution of bubbles at your house um, with things that you probably have in your kitchen cabinet. And so we'll also have a link to how to um, the recipe for this in, in another post. But all you need to do is take a, a jar and pour in one part soap. So everyone should have soap at this point. So this is one ounce of dish soap that I had in my kitchen. And then 15 parts. So I did one ounce of soap, so I'll do 15 ounces of warm water into my jar. And it just fills the glass. And then a pinch um, or a very, very teeny tiny amount of some kind of polymer. And so our recipe at the Montshire says guar gum. I don't have guar gum at home, but I do have cornstarch. And so cornstarch has seemed to work as a nice polymer to help our bubbles last a little bit longer. And so when you screw on your lid, you just want to gently turn this up and down to, to mix. You don't want to shake it, shake it, shake it really hard because then you'll make a zillion little bubbles and then you don't have very much bubble solution to actually make the bubbles that you want. So I hope you enjoyed a little intro to bubbles at home. Um, check back in the next couple of coming days. We'll have lots of experiments about soap and bubbles.